Ah, Hearts of Iron 4. The game of brokenness. There are so many nations in this game which it is really easy to break the game with, but I have a personal favorite. And no, it's not America. No, it's not you, Funny Mustache Man. And no, it's not you, Bigger Mustache Man. My friends, it is Mexico. Mexico is in fact one of the most, if not the most, broken nation in the entire game. And honestly, though I say broken, it's like, it, it, I kind of, it kind of starts off broken in more way than one. But no, we are going to break Mexico in a great way. And today, my friends, I'm going to show you how you can make the greatest superpower the world has ever known out of Mexico. Now, Mexico at the beginning of the game starts out with a both good and also simultaneously shit position. The government is nothing more than a series of corrupt officials and a lot of bullshit. We have a grand total of two research slots, a weak industry with five usable factories, but actually a decent sized army of which a lot of them are missing a lot of guns. And the majority of them are like three dudes with two guns between them. So the first thing we gotta do is actually get some research and production going. Because Lord knows we're gonna need to produce a lot. Next up, the normal protocol would be to build civilian factories in the beginning, but we actually need to produce as many mill factories as we possibly can in the beginning. Only the land is kinda shit and doesn't want to seem to build anything anywhere. The next and biggest thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna take our entire army, and we're just gonna go ahead and delete the majority of it. Now you may be looking at me wondering why? Why would you do this? Why would you delete your entire army? Well, we're kinda really behind on guns. Now, deleting all of our men sounds kind of crazy, but the reason why we do so is because of our focus tree. You see, Mexico has not just one, not two, but three possible civil wars that can break out at any given moment. And balancing that is an absolute pain in the ass. So in order to make sure that your country does not break out into a civil war, you need to follow these exact steps. The taking consistent one is Cadillo Rebellion, which you can only fix by doing one of these two focus trees. The quickest and most efficient way is to exile and go down the path of arresting him and push for democracy. First things first, you gotta get the plan of Agua Prieta. And then while you wait for the focus tree to complete, you're actually just gonna sit here and not do anything. You're gonna take these men and you are not going to train them because you want them to not use any equipment. You want to save up as much as possible and build up as large of a surplus as you can. You could get rid of your artillery as well as your close air support production, but you still want to keep some of this going and just put all available factories that get built or made, put it on basic infantry equipment. Oh look, 22% stability. Wow, that is way more stable than I thought Mexico would be at this point. Okay, Agua Prieta down. Now it's time to exile Calles, because that is immediately going to get rid of Calistas, which is a absolutely terrible effect. We are getting a grand total of 0.42 political power per day. In other words, you're not going to be able to do anything with your government because your government can't do anything. Wait, is this Mexico or is that America? And now once this is done, you could go down the path of purging the bureaucracy and just arrest General Cedillo. If you do so, that will get rid of this immediately, but you don't need to worry about this because this is not going to cause a rebellion. Right now, we are on moderate tensions, and every single time that this ticks down, it is going to lead to the next stage, from low to moderate to high to very high, and then rebel. The moment that you do this focus tree, it's going to completely end everything. So you can let this tick in the background for a while and take care of some other focus trees that we want to get to more quickly, namely ban political militias, and then from there we are going to move our way down. Also, please note that some of these focus trees that you see in here are going to actually reduce the tension from, say, moderate to low, which in turn is going to give you more time. In my opinion, Revolutionary Women is actually much better because it not only gives you three free civilian factories, but simultaneously the next one after that is going to give you two free military factories. So overall, between the two, this one is significantly better. Okay, first event. Now you're going to be receiving a series of these events that are all going to relate to the church, and depending on the action that you choose here, that is going to either strengthen the church or it's going to weaken the church. If you make the church too weak or strong, and your stability is below a certain amount, I believe it's 60% in here, then that means that you are going to have a civil war. That is where the Cristero and the Second Mexican Revolution thing come in. So if I, right now, went burn in hell traitor, that is going to send me into atheist state, which is simultaneously then going to cause me to um, go through a civil war. In the beginning of the game, you're going to need to kind of balance this and try and maintain a decent level. I prefer having a slightly more Catholic state. So requiescat in pace is what I choose. Now here's a little trick for you. At this point, I could go ahead and just select a national focus, but I'm able to wait for a couple more days here to get a few more political power points. Boom, that put us at 150, which in turn is going to allow me to spend this money on a social reformer. Now you want this because not only is it going to increase your stability by 15%, but also it's going to start getting ticking democracy going. Which, yes, this is not a communist or a fascist run. This is going to be the pure greatest Mexican democracy. The real democracy that America cannot compare to. 
And now, as soon as you have that chosen, now you can go down to Soldaderas. Oh, uh, look. We're almost kind of stable now. And good. With that focus tree completed, you now can take your attention over here to Spain, which, as you are probably aware, is going through its little, uh, you know, Civil War thing as it normally does. We are going to take on some refugees. Now, honestly, looking at this here, it is, in my opinion, better to go ahead and support the Republicans, like, support the Loyalists. The reason being is that not only does it allow you to maintain kind of better control of your church, but simultaneously because it just provides some better bonuses overall. And then as soon as you have 100 political power, then you're going to need to immediately start boosting uh, your working conditions. Because Lord knows we need to get the stability up as high as we possibly can. And with that focus tree done, now we can finally begin to break the game. Now you may have already seen this in a number of guides, but now in your decisions tab under military issues, you should see something called support the Spanish left. And every seven days, whenever you hit this button, three of your convoys will disappear as well as 250 units of guns. These guns are going to go over to support whichever side you have chosen, and no matter what happens, whether or not they fail or whether they make it, you're going to get some kind of experience. If they make it, which you have a 60% chance of doing so, you're going to get 20 army experience. If it fails and your ship sinks, then you're going to get 25 navy experience. But regardless of which you choose, you are going to get some kind of experience. And now that we have built up a surplus of 4,000 guns, we are going to be able to hit this button very often. And rather than be lying down our way here more, since we have that, while we prepare our army experience, it's time to go ahead and fix our little thing here and uh, stop a civil war from happening. Now you gotta watch it, you gotta make sure when you hit it, that it's gonna pop up immediately again the next day, so you gotta hit it again. And just keep on hitting it, just over and over and over again. Boom! Look at that! 20 army experience! We're gonna go ahead and get ourselves an infantry expert. And boom, perfect, we now have 105 army experience and 100 naval experience. And the reason we picked up this guy is because not only are we going to have primarily infantry, but simultaneously we need that ticking army experience. We want to get as much of this as possible. Now again, you've probably seen a guide before that showed this kind of broken exploit. I mean, after all, army and navy experience is great as it allows you to vastly customize your units in a way that you never could before, as well as get discounts on things. But with no step back, this is now even more broken. Because since we have the officer core, all that you have to do is go to Land Doctrine, and oh, look, I can now immediately purchase a Doctrine. Just flat out right. Now, we are not going to do this immediately because we are going to make this cheaper, but you see what I mean. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go to Officer Corps, we're going to get the Spirit of the Army, and we are actually going to put this at Professional Officer Corps for that 5% discount as well as 5% Army experience gain. And then we're going to save up our political power in order to get more military staff for, say, an Army Expert, or this regrouping expert in order to get some additional army experience as well as troop modifiers. And then right before we launch our sneakiest of sneaky plans, then we are going to get a military theorist, which in turn is going to allow us to get things for significantly cheaper. Perfect. Now with Cedillo arrested, that means our stability is going to go way up. We have no worry about a uh, Cadillo rebellion. And so now we are going to make a beeline down to these focus trees to get to the really fun stuff. Since you're going with the Bolivarian Alliance here that is going to be putting you at an atheist state, you're going to want to keep on going here and supporting the church. Also at the same time, and I should have done this earlier, you should probably switch convoys over from production to something like early destroyers. Just anything you can do to start producing some ships to have some semblance of a navy. And now the coastal defense plan is active, we have, uh, it's time to move on to the fun stuff. Now, funny thing, after all this, we don't actually have all that many guns, but we have the army experience to modify our troops, and this is a decent block, all things considered, but we can make it a little bit better. And we're going to replace that initial template with something that uses less infantry equipment and gives us a little bit more firepower, along with a smaller combat width. Not only is that going to give us a ton more equipment, but simultaneously, considering how many mountains and jungle and other crap is down here, that is going to make it significantly easier for us to fight with less supply use. At the same time, though, we do need to start recruiting more infantry to flex out the front line. And look at that, we got 331 army experience to spend, superior firepower in order to support all of our artillery units, and look at that, it's 1937. We have not fought once, and yet we were able to flush out three doctrines. And we are 90 army experience away from being able to get another one. Just go ahead and deploy those three half-trained units into the field. And now we got March Southwards. And hello, Guatemala! May I have some bananas, please? Lo and behold, that has now given us a ton of equipment that we can trade away for more army experience. Honduras, same thing. 85 more army experience, integrated support, just increase the soft attack of our stuff even more, and watch the divisions melt away. 
Of course, one of the things that you probably should have done earlier was gotten transport ships so that that way you could uh, do some further attacks on Panama. You know, as well as the rest of our Caribbean vacation. El Salvador, say El Salvagon. Or at least after this brutal climate will be. Okay. Now it is time for El Nicaragua. And now that we got transports, it's time to pull a little bit of a sneaky one on Panama. Panama is ours. And now we have Liberate the Caribbean, but we want these guys to at least be at a level that they're, uh, they're trained here first, I think. In the meantime, we save our political power and we focus on just completing some of these other focus trees. Oh, and lo and behold, our XP piggy bank is gone. But hey, we managed to make it through like 80 or 90% of the tree. It is 1938. There we go, Havana has fallen. Draw an offensive line, get everyone together, and let's start pushing. Cuba is Cuban. Wait, Cuban. Cuba gone? Oh, shit. But now we can start preparing for the next invasion. Goodbye, Haiti. And goodbye, Dominican Republic. And with that, we've essentially cleared the Caribbean. Over time here, we are getting everything integrated, which is going to boost our population, which has taken, admittedly, a little bit of a beating while we've been doing some conquering. But now it's time to prepare for some greater prizes. Because the whole time that we've been consolidating here, you know, integrating and everything, getting our liberation on, uh, we also had the ability to get claims on Ecuador, Venezuela, and basically everything else down here, which we are working on. And now that we've gotten all this done, it's time to kind of go around and fix our economy here. You know, finally. We don't want to be fighting here long, so we're just going to snake our way through this whole thing. Holy crap, I hate fighting in Colombia. <laughs> all of those mountains are simply awful. Venezuela, gone. Sorry, Ecuador. Now, I'm telling you this right now. This is the most crucial part of this entire campaign once you actually take Ecuador. Whatever you do, do not just hit Ecuador and then hit done. It is the classic mistake that I've made way too many times. You're going to want to hit take all states because that way it includes the Galapagos Islands. Now, it's April of 1939. Before anything can get spicier in Europe, uh, we're going to want to declare on Peru fast. In the meantime, make sure that we have a little... Uh, Naval invasion over here prep so that we can try and take out their capital because this is the biggest pain in the ass in this entire playthrough. Immediately force the attack to try and land on the beaches. We have to push this as much as possible. Anything to take out the capital because they're going to start pouring in defenses. And now we've completely divided Peru in half. They have no way to reinforce themselves. Like, yeah, you're going to lose men. Like, we've lost 10,000, but we've taken out over 140. <laughs> It. Admittedly, that, that's gonna hurt a lot, but, uh, hey, look at that. It's August of 1939, and we're looking pretty swole. Bon voyage, Bolivia. Hello, Argentina. I don't think any Germans are gonna be fleeing to you anytime soon, I'm just saying. God, Argentina is always a pain in the ass to fight through. Sorry, Chile, but I need some spices for my Mexican cooking. And now look, it is February of 1940, and because of constant war and generation of points, we have now completed our focus tree. Shock and awe, baby. Mexico, 1940. Like a chimichanga going through the toilet. And I know I've said this before, but Uruguay is Oregon. Now the big thing is we need to start preparing to take out the United States as soon as possible. And if you're wondering why, it is because the year is 1940, and... Oh, well, they are starting to build up a bit of an army. But before we can get to the really spicy stuff down in Panama, we need to get some more troops in here fast. Which is why even though we didn't go down support General Cedillo, we are at least going to go over here to the private armies to get an extra 1% population. Because lord knows we're going to need it. Well, now it's time for the really fun stuff. Operation Just Cause? Okay, shit, well we took it. Let's see if they actually decide to declare war. <laughs> oh, that is a lot more than I anticipated that they would actually attack. Okay. Oh, and it looks like the submarines we built are starting to do some damage around here. <laughs> I mean, we're going to lose convoys ourselves, but luckily we've gotten over a thousand from all the conquering we've done. Now what we're going to do is use our very fast, very quick moving artillery, and then just create all these little encirclements everywhere we can go. Because we don't need this land, we don't want it, we don't really care about it, but this allows us to just do all these little encirclements and kind of uh, finish things off from this side. God, that is not looking very uh, even over here. <laughs> The more that we can wipe out and clear down here, the better, because the U.S. is just going to be able to just spawn out divisions. We can't overwhelm them with sheer numbers at this point. This is the game, microing slowly, gradually, just trying to gain any ground that I can, because otherwise I'm not going to be able to hold anything. What are we at? We've lost 30,000, but we've killed 250! Okay! Oh, Japan has now declared war on the Philippines. Is that going to make America join the Allies? Well, maybe this is going to cause them to have to move a bunch of their troops over. But in the meantime, while all this war is happening, you know what we can find the good in things? We can find Christ. 
Time to go Catholic. There we go. Okay, that's another group. The funny thing is, despite destroying all these units, they're still cranking out more because it's the it's the United States. There we go. Okay. It's more troops trapped around Houston. That's exactly what I want. All right, we got to let our line kind of reform up because it's not looking so hot right now. Well, it is finally time to take Belize then so we can reclaim our territory. Okay, at least we're kind of contesting things over here now. The line is getting pretty damn thin. Hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Where did all the U.S. troops go? They're getting spongier. God, and they're just stacking units down here waiting to be killed. Okay. There we go. There's another unit trap. Just isolate and destroy every single one that we possibly can. This is going to have to make them extend their lines out further, which in turn is going to allow us to start to take them out piece by piece. The majority of these troops are going to hold the line. Meanwhile, the massive amounts of trucks that we've recruited are going to be the ones doing a lot of the movement now. This is literally all that it is. You're not going to be able to overwhelm them with numbers, so you just have to isolate and destroy as many units as you possibly can. God, 200,000 Armandos have fallen, but we've killed one and a half million Americans. <laughs> Alright, I think that they're spongy enough that we can take a crack at it, so why not? Let's see what we have. Oh my god, that is a lot of green. We're taking it. It's gradual, but we got this, you know. It's only several hundred thousand of us dying here. Nothing really big, I'd say. And look at what we can do now. Redeem Atzlan. It's going to cost us 300 political power, but we're going to get cores on all of this, which is going to be nice. Oh, God, and we're veering all the way up into Canada. Well, looks like we got to get... I don't think we're going to make it. We got to get some more manpower, because <laughs> Lord knows they're not going to make it here. I just need this focus tree to complete. Why does it take 210 days? Oh, I need manpower. Washington, D.C., hello. How many men have I lost at this point? 600,000. Holy shit. Okay. Oh, and everyone. El Diablo está muerto. Now let's just go ahead while they're stuck and not able to do anything and just take out all the little points in Canada we can because it's not like they can resist us. All their troops have probably disappeared. And now Canada is gone too. Okay. That is looking exceptionally thicker than I had anticipated. Oh, Redeem Atzlan is done. Oh, look at that manpower now. Okay. Fall of New South Wales. Whoa, what is... Oh my god, Japan! And this is what sucks. I have no way to actually naval invade England and end this war, so we gotta go the old-fashioned way. Alright. Leif Erikson, coming in, but this time reversed. Alright, boys, here we go. Time to bring the British some spices. Hello, Britain. Can I interest you in some actual flavoring for your food? There we go! Everyone, look at that! The Mexican Republic with the most war score taking out the Allies. Welcome everyone to the peace of Europe! So, we made sure to replace French food with something that is properly spiced, and we made sure to actually add spice to... Well, am I gonna call it food? Ah, you know what, we'll leave it as is. But everyone, I give you the Mexican Republic. The most overpowered bullshit in the entire world. Everyone, I love Mexico. This has been a Mexico playthrough. Uh, thank you everyone who has watched. I'm not even going to bother anything with the Soviet Union. I've done my piece. I've done my piece. Thank you to everyone who has watched, and please let me know in the comments below what it is that you'd like to see next. I appreciate all of you for joining in, and that's it. I hope you have a good rest of your day, and let's, let's probably do something next time that doesn't take nearly as long. Bye, guys.